15-year-old Chris is having a severe asthma attack. His immune system has made what could be a fatal mistake and is shutting down his airways. Without help from the medical team, Chris's body may shut down completely. The breathing tubes in Chris's chest are squeezing tightly shut and filling with sticky mucus, blocking his vital oxygen supply. If he's not treated soon, he will die. This is a really life-threatening episode of asthma. Asthma is pretty common in our community and uh, most of the time it's not this life-threatening, but this one is quite serious. Chris's allergic reaction has tricked his immune system into shutting down his airways, blocking vital oxygen to the rest of his body. The drugs are supposed to help the muscles around Chris's airways to relax, but there is a problem. The mucus stops the drugs from reaching his blood supply. The vein to try and help it out, because sometimes the lungs close down too much for this stuff to work. So. Time is running out. Chris's body takes emergency action. His shoulders and neck muscles swing into action to help inflate his lungs, but even this is not working. As the pressure mounts, the team must find a treatment to get the drugs past the mucus. Chris is by no means an isolated case. One in nine Australian children suffer from asthma. But for Chris, the situation is looking dangerous. Chris is currently having Ventolin or Salbutamol through a nebulizer which he's breathing into his lungs. Uh, this acts on the muscles around the small airways and helps to open them up. Unfortunately, sometimes when the airways are very closed down, the salbutamol doesn't reach the areas that it needs to get to. The uh, inhaled ventolin is not working, then we often will go to a different form of medication. Uh, again, a relaxant for the muscles around the uh, small airways, and it helps to open those airways up, and it's given as a one-off dose over about 10-15 minutes in severe asthma. Inside Chris's body, the airways start to open as the drugs take effect. Air finally returns to Chris's lungs, inflating the 300 million tiny air sacs. Chris, feeling a bit better? At last, he can breathe. Chris seems to be feeling a lot better now. The intravenous medications seem to have taken effect. Um, he still is very tired because he's been working very hard with his breathing, but we're a lot happier with his uh, clinical progress now. Chris was admitted to intensive care for three days, with a further three days in a medical ward before being sent home. He is now back at school playing soccer and is aware that it is important to look after his asthma and to tell his teachers and family when he's not well. Chris had always expected other people to look after his asthma, but after this emergency, he now understands that he must recognise when he is having asthma and follow his asthma action plan. Before leaving hospital, Chris learnt what asthma is, how to manage his triggers, what his medications do and how to use them correctly. Chris now uses a spacer to have his medication. He also learnt how to recognise when his asthma was worse and the need to follow his asthma action plan. Chris has taken control of his asthma.